When the Disney Fox deal went through, while some of us, of course, were worried about, you know, the future of Hollywood studios and a bunch of people's jobs, one of the things to get excited about was that as X-Men fans, we would see our favorite characters join, quite frankly, at least for now, and for some time now, the winning team. I'm sorry, but it's largely true. Uh, but I'm also sorry to say that I'm here to deliver a harsh, sobering reality about the X-Men and the MCU. You gotta, you gotta know it. You don't, you don't want to be disappointed. Uh, so, so let's get to it. Uh, our story begins a long time ago, when comic book movies were just getting started, and Marvel was having serious financial problems, so much so uh, that they had to sell off the crown jewels at that time, which were the X-Men, uh, along with Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. But X-Men really were, maybe Spider-Man as well, but X-Men, oh, they were super hot at that time. Uh, and interestingly, the big movies for those uh, characters all came out at about the same time. Their film rights again sold to other studios to save Marvel as a company. Side note, Sony made a particularly good deal and got part ownership uh, of the actual character, which is why you'll never see, the, as I've said before, the Sony deal, the Sony Marvel uh, deal go away. Uh, Fox, uh, I believe they had a situation where as long as they kept making the movies, they had the film rights. And of course, they were never going to stop making those movies. So Disney found quite the workaround. Uh, anyway, while Spider-Man and Fantastic Four both tanked, both twice, by the way, X-Men, while not without its uh, speed bumps, was actually the first successful long-running comic book movie franchise. So it's really interesting, if you take a step back from it and remove your feelings as a fan, to see it become the red-headed stepchild of the MCU largely because of that success. Allow me to explain. Again, when you look at it, you know, without your fan emotions getting in the way, it's a fascinating situation. All right, so. Marvel, when they sold away all those film rights to their top characters at the time, Kevin Feige was left to develop the B-Team, uh, which is being kind, really, by the way, uh, and that's, of course, the Avengers. And develop them, he did! Uh, but then the problem becomes that while Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four easily mesh with the Avengers, the X-Men, not so much. I mean, in a world with the Avengers, why would people then fear mutants? It seems like splitting hairs, doesn't it? And speaking of mutants, uh, of course, in the comics, Wanda, Wanda Maximoff. Uh, well, uh, I think she's just actually called Wanda um, uh, in, in the MCU. But of course, in the comics, she's a mutant. Uh, but if she's uh, been redone as being Infinity, power, uh, Infinity Stone powered in the MCU. The Infinity Stone's actually accounting as, I made a video predicting this actually before it happened, quite proud of that. But the Infinity Stones are responsible for the superpowers of a number of um, MCU characters. And many fans, including myself, felt that the usage, the rampant usage, the irresponsible usage, and the epic usage of the Infinity Stones in Infinity War, and then again in Endgame, could maybe explain the rise of mutants, right? But Feige, as you're about to see, already has plans solidly in place. And that's just too much of a last minute course correct. Not only is it a big course correct, but it's such a large, it involves so many characters. Although, a lone mutant could pop up here and there in the upcoming uh, Marvel movies. Storm in Wakanda, Wolverine, anywhere! Uh, with the Infinity Stone usage, again in Infinity War and Endgame, the reasoning. Uh, but speaking of reasoning, still, the X-Men's raison d'etre, that they're a sci-fi metaphor for discrimination, just does not work in, the, in a world that's cool with the super-powered Avengers. And it's for that reason that even the 2012 Avengers vs. X-Men crossover, which was clearly trying to create a, a storyline where they, the Avengers and the X-Men could share the same space, well, all it did actually was prove that they cannot. It was a very awkward uh, crossover event. Uh, I thought creatively it wasn't the strongest either, but I think that's not totally the fault of the people who made it. I think it's partially because these two worlds just don't mesh. And in fact, in the Avengers vs. X-Men crossover, all the mutants became villains. So basically, Feige has a hugely successful cinematic universe where the X-Men just don't really fit in. On top of that, Fox's version of the X-Men are popular with audiences to this day. Uh, but with the current cast's weaker box office numbers, 
there's no reason to keep them, uh, to keep that cast. Especially when you see we get to the next section and you realize how far away any MCU X-Men movies really are. I mean, it makes sense for Feige to let the memory of the most popular on-screen X-Men fade away with the actors becoming either no longer able to reprise the role, so Feige's like, it's not, not on me, or in some cases actually age into them. James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, be sure to send Kevin Feige a Christmas card every year so you're fresh on his mind, so you can get the call. I could see that maybe working out. And then it would be like the return of McAvoy and Fassbender, and that would be a pretty good selling point. Uh, and, and, and again, this is a, a long ways away. You might be like, is it going to really take that long for the X-Men movies uh, to join the MCU that Fassbender and McAvoy would become age appropriate for their roles? It seems that that actually might be the case. Because Feige himself has said it's probably five years until we see an uh, X-Men MCU movie. Well, I've been hearing rumors that they might not show up until phase six. Six! And we're just starting phase four. That's really just so far away. Uh, furthermore, the big events that Feige does seem to have planned don't involve the X-Men. For instance, in the past week or so, rumors have significantly ramped up that Norman Osborn is the next big bad in the MCU, leading to Dark Avengers. That Feige. I hope he's crazy like a fox. We always think this stuff might not work out, but it always does, so let's see. Uh, and Dark Avengers, by the way, was actually the fallout from Secret Invasion. So Kevin Feige, he's once again making some big changes here to continuity. Uh, I think it's doubtful that Feige would just completely skip Secret Invasion since he introduced the, the scrolls in Captain uh, Marvel. But perhaps that event will come either after Dark Avengers or maybe be folded into it. You know, the scrolls working with Norman Osborn. I can see that. Uh, but in terms of this conversation, you don't need the X-Men for any of this. Uh, now, the MCU is also ramping up its cosmic stories with Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain Marvel, the upcoming Eternals, and there's even a rumored Nova movie. Are you going to do Shazam better, Marvel? Damn it! But, and I loved Shazam, but I mean better as in more successful. Uh, although, do, I really want, do we really want a small kid running around the MCU? Again, it seems like a really bad idea, but Kevin Feige hasn't had a brain fart yet. Uh, Never say never, though, but he really, he really likes to dance with the devil. All right, so, oh, and you know, you know, really tempt fate. But with the cosmic stuff, I think there's a strong chance we'll see the X-Men's favorite aliens, the Shi'ar, such a cool group of aliens. They're basically bird-based. They're really awesome. We might see them show up in the MCU before any mutants, just as the Shi'ar, or at least the Shi'ar gods, recently showed up in the Thor comics sans the X-Men. And I gotta say it worked, that Jason Aaron Thor run. It's pretty amazing. Uh, now, again, we could get a sprinkling of mutants over the next couple of movies. But for the reasons listed here, it seems for all, for all intended purposes and for us getting excited, the X-Men will be the absolute last joint to join the MCU party. I can't believe. Like the Fantastic Four being rewarded for their failure. I mean, I like the Fantastic Four. They're fine. I'm mostly excited, like most of you, about Emily Blunt and John Krasinski potentially getting that gig. Emily Blunt. She couldn't do the Black Widow role, it may, and, but for this to circle around and the MCU to pick her up years later, that would be fabulous. Um, but that's the reason I'm most excited for the for the Fantastic Four. But it's like the X-Men, because they, they succeeded, they got to get to the back of the line. Ah, uh, frustrating. How do you feel about this? I mean, I'm frustrated, but I understand it. Because really, should the X-Men even be a part of the MCU? As much as I'd love to see them kind of show up in a Avengers movie here and there, I don't really know if they fit. And I don't know, but may, I don't know if Disney wants to have two, again, Marvel Cinematic Universes. Um, it's really compl complicated, and but you know we'll see if Feige can figure this out as well. What, what would you advise him? How do you think the X-Men can be feared and hated in a world where the Avengers are loved? They just have to be a bunch of jerks, basically. And of course, that's not how the X-Men work. There's a good and a bad side. You know, the Martin Luther King, Malcolm X division, which is you know a really fantastic idea. Um, but then how does that work if you have like a third group of people who are being discriminated against who suddenly everyone loves? You, I mean, just imagine, like, think about that for the metaphor with King and um, Malcolm X. How it just belittles it and is weird. All right, so anyway, write your thoughts down below. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.